It's all about creating conversations. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 455 is with Dr. Christian Gregory from The Right to Offend on A&E. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Doctor, I hope you are enjoying your conversations with everybody today because you've got a word that needs to be heard. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And yes, very uplifting and feeling the love, Era. I, I got to tell you something, Doctor. Mark Marin, for the past couple of weeks, has been praising your father in, in the way that he communicated reality in a way that people could chuckle, they could, they could, like, they could learn more, and that this is a, a, an art form that, that is, has been lost. And then all of a sudden, here comes the right to offend. The timing, the timing feels top down. It feels divine. And it's, uh, you know, I, I would love to be telling my father Dick Gregory's story through a historical lens, but it's sadly, it's quite topical and it's still very medicinal. So yes, it's a, it's an art form, an art form that many of the founding fathers and founding mothers of black comedy really just dialed in. And, um, uh, comedy is a relay and, the, the, the baton is a microphone and all of the comedians, they have earned that microphone and just do an outstanding job stirring and advocating. Why, why is it that we find trust in humor? Because, I mean, I mean, there had to be lessons that your father sat you down and talked to you about, about saying, look, this is what you have to do, but this is the way you need to do it so that people will activate it. it I think it's important. Laughter is medicine. Yeah. And uh, that was that in our home. That was very true. I mean, we would. I've, I've never seen more laughter um, at funerals than in the Gregory family. And I don't mean off-putting or disrespectful, but to really celebrate the gifts um, such as life. And so we saw it firsthand. My dad's life was was rooted in so much challenge, so much adversity, so much darkness suffocating oppression, um, just uh, growing up in, in the throes of Jim Crow, the Great Depression. So his lens was very unique. So a lot of the isms and osms we deal with today um, are quite different. And so it's a, it's a disservice. And my dad would always point that out, that it's a disservice, not to acknowledge how much progress that's been made, but also realize and use those same tools, but the digital um, variation of those tools to go out and do real meaningful work because you have an obligation almost um, to go out and use your craft, use this blessing that's bestowed upon you to make things better for marginalized people specifically, but for all of humanity. On a &E, the show is called The Right to Offend, The Black Comedy Revolution. I mean, look at the circle that you've created here, and you're introducing a new generation, the millennials as well as Generation Z, to Moms Mabley, Whoopi Goldberg, Tiffany Haddish. I mean, you see that circle that's evolving there? It's incredible. I've said many times, the list of who's not on it is a short list, because literally everyone is in this documentary, and they, the, the, they're all so clear. It's sobering how clear everyone is with what their intent and also understanding their obligation and the shoulders that they stand on. So it is a, it's a special time for this documentary to air. And I think people, um, it's going to, obviously those of us who, have, who grew up on this, but as you pointed out, rightfully so, the younger generation, the millennials, the Gen Z's, to understand that this is the foundation that the comedians they grew up on and the comedians they enjoy, um, these are the shoulders they stand on and it's important. One of the greatest things about modern day television are these HD antennas where you can pick up all these old shows on high definition. And, and I, I'd love to see the reaction of people that, that see Fred Sanford as Red Fox. I mean, talk about uh, they were not the same people. <laughs> <laughs> you know who broke that down best? Eddie Murphy, when he first went on his Raw tour and he said, for any of you folks in the audience that thought you were going to see me in a Gumby outfit um, or Alfalfa or Buckley, you got you have you you you, you, are, you have a rude awakening coming. So it shows the duality. It shows the importance of being able to be one place and serve that market and that audience, and then being able to go and connect to who you really are. And so now think about it. You know the one or two platforms they have now. Now there's literally hundreds of platforms. So it is. It's all about expression. It's all about freedom of expression. It's about First Amendment rights. It's about right to offend. Yes. And if you don't like it, you can simply walk out of the venue or hit stop on the player. But it's an exciting time to really give the world some tools. 
Well, even the executive producer, Kevin Hart, he's talked about it on his own podcast about how it's become a place, comedy right now, where people are having to watch what they say. And he says that just isn't right. It's not right. It's actually, it's detrimental. And I think if things come in cycles, I think it will burn out, but it's, it's detrimental and it's a disservice. And I think it's important we calibrate this too. You know, the, the, in the early 60s, when you got canceled, then you normally went missing. You normally yeah. were disappearing. It was a profoundly different time than what a, you know, an analog canceling, profoundly different from a digital canceling. And so I think we can learn a lot from the adversity those, those founding fathers and founding mothers dealt with. And today's comedians, really, they do. They're, uh, most of them are historians. You can tell by the interviews they give here that they're very clear on their history and they're very clear on the tools that they have. Um, and it's just a matter of utilizing and taking care of their own minds. But comedy is difficult work, and a lot of folks don't understand how much time and preparation goes into the simple delivery that uplifts us all. And it's so, um, it's so, it's so medicinal because uh, laughter continues to be excellent medicine. I, I got to tell you, the, the, the closeness of this show is, is very much deep inside my heart. The reason why is because you can go back and look at the schedule. Your father was scheduled to be in Charlotte at the Comedy Zone before, before we lost him. And, and I've all, it just made me dig deeper into his history and his story. And so to see the, the right to offend, this, this, this is a continuation of what he was moving forward. No question about it. My dad returned to comedy later in life. Uh, and part of that, I frequently say no country for old legends. As age and time and his health had started to deteriorate a bit, he wasn't able to keep his shows as on message. So a lot of the high school lectures um, got a little too colorful. So <laughs> after a couple of high schools called and complained, we shifted him. And no one tells Dick Gregory what to do. We just gently guided him um, back into comedy. And Dick Gregory and Paul Mooney, went on the road together as the godfathers of comedy, and they weren't just telling old man jokes. It was absolutely, it was ripped from the headlines. It was hilarious. It was still very topical, and they were still agitating. They're two of the best that have ever done it, so to get them as the dynamic duo together was special. So, yes, he was. He had 10 shows scheduled um, the week that he, sadly, that yeah. he passed away, but he went, he went out doing exactly what he wanted to do and would not have wanted it any other way. I'm so glad that you're part of this, Doctor, because this is going to change people in the way that they go back to the comedy clubs and stuff like that and and, and, and basically to understand that there was a journey that made this night tonight happen and, and, it, and it required all Absolutely. of the comedians that you're talking about. Lots of sacrifice. The takeaway you'll get from this two-part documentary event, you will see the sacrifice because we see them on stage we don't see all the That's grueling right. hard work that takes place off stage. And this documentary does a marvelous job of connecting those dots. You're so right about that. My favorite place at a, at a comedy club is the green room before or after their, their show, because I get to, I get to hear some stories, dude. That's the place. <laughs> Please come back to this show anytime. Come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Eric, thank you so much. Take good care and enjoy the show. You be brilliant. Okay, sir. As well. Thank you.